great. Thank you everybody for coming. Sorry about my internet issues this afternoon. Um, I'm going to call this uh, meeting to order Wednesday, June 1st, 2022. Present this afternoon, myself, Natasha Yakovlev and Commissioner Helen Kahn. And this uh, Zoom meeting is being recorded. Is there anybody here for public comment? Not seeing any public comment. I, do you see someone, Annie? No, there was just a few people still loading. Okay. Or connecting. Okay, I think you're good. We're good? Yeah. Then. Agenda item number three, we have an application for an outdoor dining extension into a public space for Econica Social Club LLC at 1 Amber Lane. Lane. And sorry, I'm just meeting I think, being recorded. I think my internet just came back on. Um, can you hear me okay, Annie? Yes. A little robotic. I don't know if that's you or someone else. Can you hear me okay, Annie? My unstable internet connection. This is going to be a difficult internet connection. This is going to be an echo and a lag. This is going to be um, I yep. think you've signed on through your computer. Can you maybe connect through that and then get off of your phone? It won't. That's the computer's the problem. Can you pick me off of that That's one? The computer's the problem. Can you pick me off of that one? Computer's the problem. Can you pick me off of that one? Computer's the problem. Can you pick me off? All right. I think it's gone. <laughs> okay. okay let's do this before it all happens again okay so item number three the application for the outdoor dining extension to for iconica do we have somebody here from iconica yes yes we do hello how are you good how are you oh great thank you for your patience um can you let us know who you are yes i am jimena Samaron. I am one of the owners at Iconica Social Club. Wonderful. Thank you for coming. This looks like a fun thing that you've got going on. Yeah, I think it looks good. Yeah. So um, first, we are going to be doing your dining extension. And that is for the 10 parking spaces in the contained area. And the city's dropped off their barriers already. Yes, they have. OK, great. Um, Helen, do you have any questions about the dining extension portion of their request? No, it sounds like, I mean, you did this last year, right? It was pretty similar or exactly the same maybe as you had last year. Yeah. Yep. So I don't have any questions about that now. Okay. Then I will make a motion to approve the application for the outdoor dining extension into the public space for Iconica Social Club. Second. All in favor? Aye. Oh, that's Annie's job. Sorry, Annie. Yeah, and we also have to include in the motion um, transportation of alcoholic beverages over the sidewalk. Oh, that's right. Um, okay, then I will make a motion to approve the application for the outdoor dining extension into a public space for Iconica Social Club, including the transfer of alcoholic beverages over the sidewalk. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Then moving on to number four, the application for the new entertainment license for Iconica Social Club. And this is for proposed entertainment of music performances of various kinds, Wednesday through Sunday, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m., Monday, Friday, and Saturday, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. And I see that an email went out to Abutters and the feedback has been positive. Is that still the case? As far as we know, yes. There okay. Has, and there has no negative feedback. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's great. Mm -hmm. That's so great. 
Um, and do you plan, do the hours, the days and hours that you asked for, was that just to leave it really flexible or do you think you're going to have? Um... So the hours that um, is being coordinated with the Arts Council, so that's Friday and Saturday and Monday from six to eight. Um, okay. those, are, those are a definite thing that is going to be happening. Okay. But, yeah, I mean, yes, the reason why we have the other hours a little bit more flexible is because the people who are playing for us uh, at, you know, an afternoon slot, is, it, is, uh, it is not something that, it, it's more informal, it's more to have a stage for people to be able to play. So it's not something that's going to be booked, certainly, all of those times, uh, hardly at all. Um, yeah, we usually, just, well, we sometimes have during the weekend with these brunches, and that's mainly like from 11 to one. noon or one. And that has been when people have kind of requested that there was like a little bit more of like a morning brunch, like music. Uh, but that is usually, that will probably only be Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we just wanted to leave it flexible. Just, yeah. Yep. Helen, what questions do you have? Yeah, I guess it was that. I was just trying to understand the, the hours and the days. So, but it's just to give you the option of Wednesday and Thursday, I guess. Also. It's about okay. flexibility, yeah. Okay, I guess that makes sense. And you, I think, did some music last year as well, right? Did you, yeah. or you had music open? Mm -hmm. And did you have any complaints or anything from, from anyone about that? We never received a complaint. Great. That's what we love to hear. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't have any other questions. And do you, is the music going to be amplified? So uh, cer certainly the music that is being done through the Arts Council, that, that is going to be amplified. Okay. Um, which is also why it's ending, you know, promptly at 8 p.m. Yes. Uh, the other music, it, there is, sometimes it's not, sometimes it's, um, just somebody with a guitar. Uh, I mean, it can be very informal sometimes. Um, other times it is amplified, but I mean, yep. we try to be conscious of not having it like too loud. We know it's residential around where we are. And again, we haven't gotten complaints. So we're just trying to keep doing what we're, we're doing yep. and hope that uh, it continues to feel respectful to everybody around us. I guess I, I do have a question just so I understand it. So the Arts Council is, so essentially the Arts Council is putting on these little concerts or whatever the music um but and you're loaning your space it's sort of like that kind of arrangement like they're essentially 100 percent responsible for getting the music acts and making sure that everything's going okay with them yeah. is that the arrangement is that a question for yeah yeah it's, it's a poorly worded question i guess i'm wondering in the event that there should be a uh, neighbors who have an issue with it I'm just wondering who the responsible party is. Is it the Northampton Arts Council or is, or is it you? Have you sort of taken on ownership of this music that they're arranging? That's, a, I mean, that's a good question. Uh, I think that the, obviously it's in the parking lot, so it's not like our space in okay. to that capacity, but we are the adjacent building to the parking lot. So that's why we're trying to work together to be able to help maintain and make those events happen. Um, if there were some sort of complaint or something, I mean, we feel like we communicate really well with, with Brian. Um, he's been very hands-on about it. So I, I don't think, I mean, we would be willing to, to do whatever was necessary on our part if there was a complaint that was to them. Does I mean, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I mean, it, yeah, it's, I mean, hopefully it won't be something that'll be tested, but um, yeah. I guess no, it's I yeah, I understand. good to think, of, I think about I as well, yeah. Better answer than that, I, I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it seems the, the arts and culture folks are coordinating it. They would be the primary point person should there be complaints. And then it's um, the biggest thing is like is communication with the neighbors. And it seems like you guys are really great communicators and it's, it seems important to you to um, make sure everybody feels like this is going to go well. Yeah. So um, Helen, did you have anything else? Because I do not. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Do you want to make the motion for this one? 
Uh, sure, I'll make a motion to approve the application for a new entertain. Uh, sorry, a new entertainment license for Iconica Social Club, as detailed in item four on the agenda. I will second that motion. And Natasha. Yes. And Helen. Helen. Yes. Oh, okay. sorry. Yes, I think my. <laughs> Computer dinging and I did say yes. I think I got dinged out though. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll move on then. Um, good luck to the Iconica folks. This is really fun. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thanks. All right. Next up, applications for short-term liquor license, building a brewing, 320 Riverside Drive in Florence. For June 11th, 2022, from 12 to 8 p.m., this is for a beer release, and you are seeking a wine and malt license. Hi. Hello, how are you? Good. So you want to let us know what you're up to? Yep, uh, we have for this a, event? Uh, we're looking for a 12 to 8 o'clock. Uh, we're doing a special release, our summer release of our grapefruit IPA. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll also have our, our Pilsner on tap and some other summer specialties, a couple lower alcohol beers that we do. Uh, we've got a 20 by 30 tent, five picnic tables to be outside, and the Thai chili food truck will be there from about two till eight. And um, that's about it. As per usual, we'll have uh, free juice boxes and seltzers for people who bring their kids. And uh, people can also bring outside food if they want. Is this going to go in the courtyard or over on the brewery side? Oh, no, just, just in the front side. Okay, nice. And we have, uh, a, when we'll have a full snow fence to wrap around the entire tent to regulate coming and going and yep. Regular, yep. regular setup. Great. Um, Helen, do you have any questions? No, I don't. All right. Then I will uh, move to application for the short-term liquor license as outlined in agenda item number five. Second. And Helen? Yes. And Natasha? Yes. All right. Thank you, O'Brien. Thank you very much. Have a good rest of your night. You too. Item number six, application for transfer of common victualler license. This is transferring from Ellery, Ellery Manager LLC, DBA to Ellery, transferring to Trustees of Smith College, DBA to Ellery Hotel at 259 Elm Street. And do we have anybody here? Yeah, hi, I'm Andy Cox. I'm the Executive Director of Auxiliary Services. So the Clark Management Group reports to me and they're the, one runs, they're the ones running the hotel. Yes, wonderful to see you again. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I think this is a very easy one, right, Annie? Everything submitted. Yeah, this was my fault. This should have been on the agenda last last meeting when they came for the inholder transfer. Okay. Um, no problem. Yeah, Ellen, they serve a continental breakfast, and I think sometimes they do like a cheese and cracker tea. Whatever they yeah. have historically, that's sort of the plan. It's not a full restaurant or anything. Yeah, that's fine. That sounds good. Helen, do you have any questions? I do not. Would you like to take this motion? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve the application for a transfer of a common victualler license uh, as detailed in item six on the agenda. I'll second. Um, Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank you. Great, thank you. Agenda item seven, application short-term liquor licenses for the Academy of Music at 274 Main Street. This is for a wine and malt license and with a fee waiver request for the following dates, June 17th and 18th from 6.30 to 11 for the Django and June Festival, June 22nd from 7 to 11 for a John Hyatt concert, and June 25th from 7 to 11 for the Charo Fest. And is Melissa here? Uh, I'm in here in her place. My name is Cadence. She, her Hello. pronouns. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. um, has anything changed in how these events will be functioning? Uh, nope. Just standard shows, whatever she talked about. It's nothing's changed. The usual? Yep, just the usual. Okay. Helen, do you have any questions? No, I don't. All right. Then I will 
move to approve the applications for short-term liquor licenses as outlined in agenda item seven. Second. And Helen? Yes. And Natasha? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda number eight, application for short-term liquor license. This is for DA Sullivan and Sons Incorporated on Monday, June 18th from 5.30 to 6.30 at the Academy of Music at 274 Main Street. This is a cocktail hour for a conference and you are seeking a wine and malt license. Do we have somebody here from DA Sullivan? I, Annie, do we have anybody yet? I Hi, I'm here, sorry. <laughs> Hello, how are Having you? Having some technical difficulties. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> it's been a real problem this afternoon. Yeah. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about the event that you're holding? Yep, so we're hosting a conference for a uh, family business of general contracting companies spread throughout the United States. So a lot of them haven't been to New England before and we're having a little cocktail hour for them at the Academy of Music. Um, we've done some work over there and it's kind of before we go out to dinner just to kind of have them see the space for an hour, have some drinks and some foods and, and then move on to the next event. Okay, um, that sounds good. Helen, do you have any questions? I don't, I don't know. Okay. I don't have any other further questions. If you want to make the motion for this one. Sure, I'll make a motion to approve the application for a short-term liquor license for DA Sullivan and Sons, Inc. as detailed in item eight on the agenda. I will second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Annie, can I redo the motion for the Academy because I did not mention the fee waiver? Oh yeah, um, you can. You can move to, to make an amendment. Okay, then I would like to move to make an amendment to um, agenda item number seven, application for short-term liquor licenses to add the fee waiver for the Academy of Music. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank, Thank you. Jennifer. Thank you all so much. Thank you, see ya. Okay. Number nine, application for farm winery liquor license to sell at farmer's markets and agricultural events. This is the East Hampton Cider Project LLC for Saturday's Northampton Farmer's Market, April 30th, 2022 through November 12th, 2022 from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. And do we have somebody here from the Cider Project? Uh, yeah, I am. Um, I'm Josh Brummage. I'm the uh owner and head cider maker for the East Hampton Cider Project. Hi there, thank you for coming. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Good. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you plan to do at the farmer's market? Yeah, so um, I'm a small um, craft cidery. I started up last year pretty much in 2021. And um, the goal of the project is to reintroduce cider specific apples into the Western Mass area. So since 2018, um, I've been planting um, grafted trees and seedling trees that are primarily going to be used for hard cider making. Uh, in the meantime, I've been working with orchards in the area as well, like um, Park Hill in East Hampton and uh, Bashista in Southampton and other orchards in the area to um, get the apples that I need to create my ciders. Um, so anyways, I've been selling at farmer's markets. I sold at the uh, East Hampton farmer's market last year and I got accepted into the Northampton farmer's market this year. And uh, I'm hoping to be able to sell there um, from Saturdays um, throughout the season. Ed, will you continue at the East Hampton farmer's market this year as well? I will, yep. Great. Um, Helen, do you have some questions? No, I don't. It looks like all the documents are submitted and in order, so I don't. Yep. Looks good to me. Would you like to make the motion for this one? Uh, sure, I will uh, move to approve the application for uh, farm winery liquor license to sell at farmers, markets and agricultural events for East Hampton Cider Project as detailed in item nine in the agenda. I will second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank you, Josh, good luck. Yep. Thanks a lot.
Okay, item number 10, applications for short-term liquor licenses for the Northampton Center for the Arts at 33 Holly Street for the 33 outside courtyard party. This is a wine and malt license with a fee waiver requested on July 1st, 7 to 9.30, July 22nd, 7 to 9.30, August 12th, 7 to 9.30, and September 2nd, 7 to 9.30. And do we have somebody here from 33 Holly? Yep, I'm here, Joanna. Hello, how are you? Hey, I'm good, how are you? I'm good. Do you wanna tell us about this series of events that you have? Yeah, we did this last year. Um, so it's the second annual. Their courtyard, free open to the public courtyard parties with um, DJs. We have a DJ on our board, so he does it along with other couple guys he works with. Um, and we have a beer for sale. This year, we're also going to sell wine, which we have left over from the event we did in April, the last time I got a liquor license. Um, and it's it's pretty, you know, we did it successfully last year. We have, we set up a beer garden with stanchions and the sellers uh, checked the IDs and did wristbands. And then we had lots of board members and staff uh, around the perimeter, keeping an eye on entrances and exits. Same setup. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Helen, do you have any questions? No. Sounds like it's been tested and it worked out. So I don't have yeah. any questions. It's yeah. great. That's great. So beautiful. Very nice. Then I will uh, move to approve the applications for short-term liquor licenses as outlined in item number 10, as well as approve the requested fee waiver. Great, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, Helen? Yes. And Natasha? Yes. Item 11, application for short-term liquor license for Drawing Board Brewing Company at 36 Main Street. This is for pints on the patio, wine and malt on the following dates from 12 p.m. to 10 p.m. on June 4th, June 11th, June 18th, and June 25th. And do we have Corey here? I think it's Corey. Yep. Great. How are you? Doing well, thanks. How are you? Good. So this is the usual pints on the patio. The usual, and as I've said before, hopefully this will be the last time for the temporary ones, but we'll see. <laughs> and if it's not, we're always happy to see you. Fantastic. Excellent. Um, Helen, do you have any questions for Corey? No, I do not. Would you like to make the motion? Sure. I'll make a motion to approve the applications for short-term liquor licenses for Drawing board, board Brewing Company at 36 Main Street um, as detailed in item 11 of the agenda. I will second. And Natasha. Natasha. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and Helen. Yes. Thank you. All right, moving on, item number 12, public hearing on a transfer of an annual all alcoholic beverages restaurant license and pledge of license, transfer of common victual license and application for new entertainment license. Transferring from AC Thayer LLC, DBA Patria at 150, 154 Main Street. Transferring to Serious Hospitality Group, LLC, DBA Tealis in the Satellite Bar, 150, 154 Main Street. Proposed manager is Amanda Riesling. And the proposed entertainment is late night DJs and dancing on Friday and Saturday nights. Other live entertainment, music of live performance during earlier hours, Wednesday through Saturday, all open hours. Um, I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. Is there anyone here for public comment? Annie, are you seeing anybody? I am not. Okay, great. Then um, who do we have here this afternoon? Hi. I'm Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Um, could you tell me how you're pronouncing the name of the restaurant? Tell us. Tell us. Okay, great. Um, you want to let us know what you're planning? I just need some names for the record, too. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Annie. Uh, Amanda Reisling. And then uh, Nan Bowie. 
and also Attorney Peter Irvine. Hello. Hello. All right, so Amanda, do you wanna let us know what's in store? So um, we are planning to um, open a new uh, full service restaurant in this space that we know so well. Um, <laughs> um, uh, so our planned hours of operation are, you know, evening, so 4, 4 p.m. probably opening. Initially we'll be open um, uh, Wednesday, probably through Sunday. Um, uh, Thorns is requiring that we be open seven days a week um, as of May, 2023. So we're gonna slowly move into that as we, you know, get more acquainted to um, business and staffing and all that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Um, but we certainly plan on having, um, staying open later. So 4 p.m. opening, staying open till at least midnight on most nights. We may do a couple of nights, like as we move into our seven days a week of some nights closing earlier, but certainly till midnight, Wednesday, uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday till one, two, when that is available to us. Um, and then Sunday, probably still till midnight. And are you hoping to have um, outside and inside entertainment or just inside? Probably just inside. Um, we, you know, we, when we were, um, when I was working for Patria, we did some outdoor, but we are, um, I don't know that we would certainly dip our toe into that this year. I think we, our plan was mostly the entertainment being indoors only. Yep. I think that's probably because that helps us with the neighborhood. Um, there, yeah. When we be doing it, there's nobody in Thorns, so we don't have to, you know, right. more respectful of, our, of the, the surrounding community. Yep, I think that's great. Um, Helen, what questions do you have? That was my big question. <laughs> so, <laughs> and you answered it the way that I hope you, hoped you would. So, um, so I don't actually, I don't really have a, other questions related to that, so. Okay, um, is there anything else that you wanted to tell us about the restaurant before we close the public hearing portion? Um, we're hoping to give people a place to have fun and like, and be comfortable and, you know, another place to be where people feel good. That's really what we're trying to do. Yeah, no, it's really exciting. And thank you for taking it on yeah. to build this <laughs> with more food and activity. Yes, we need that. All of us do. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, then I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. A second. Okay. So I, I am, Helen, as thrilled as you are to hear that the entertainment portion of this request is indoor. Um, I know that there was a complaint last year from one of the residential abutters. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure that person will be as thrilled. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> inside um, and it provides another entertainment venue downtown yes. right we are surely surprisingly lacking at the moment um, I don't have any concerns issuing this transfer to you no no I definitely do not no I'm look, okay. looking forward to it looking forward to everything going smoothly <laughs> absolutely um, so there's some documents still Annie that I see are needed do we need to motion contingent on those documents or is it? Um, I mean, the, the workers comp and the fair wage and the liquor liability, I know Amanda's aware of that and I don't, I don't technically need that until I issue the license. I do, am, I am missing pledge documents from um, attorney Irvine. Do you, have you had any success? getting that? Uh, I do not yet have the pledge documents. Okay. So I would ask that we get get the approval contingent on us submitting those. Okay. As, and, you know, with the hope that we, we have them very soon and then we can move this to ABCC without having to come back to the July meeting. Right. I, I'm pretty sure I have three days to submit the application to the ABCC after the local authority acts on it. Okay. Um, so I would hate for that to hold us up if it was after the three days. Um, 
So, I mean, we can, we can talk about that after uh, or tomorrow or the next day. I would just. Okay. Yeah. I'll be in touch with you. Okay. Okay. So Andy, does that mean we should hold off on approving this? If there's a three day clock that starts as soon as we do. I mean, I could all, I can always submit the application to the ABCC so that I check that box of sending it in in the appropriate amount of time with the understanding that they are definitely going to come back and look for those documents but it, that's better than holding it until july okay yeah. that's what we'd like to do yeah okay Go forward then let's do it um then i will make a motion to approve the transfer of the all the annual all alcoholic beverages restaurant license and pledge of license, as well as a transfer of common Vixler license and the application for the new entertainment license. Uh, contingent. Contingent on receiving the pledge documents from attorney Irvine. Second. And Natasha. Yes. And Helen. Yes. Great. This is exciting. Good luck, you guys. Thank you so Thank you much. Thank you. Moving on, item 13, we have a request from Blue Paws Incorporated DBA JJ's Tavern to conduct a sound study at 99 Main Street during the week of June 6, 2022, with a 30 minute music performance between 5 p.m. and 5.30 p.m. Do we have somebody here for that, Annie? Uh, hi, yep. Yeah. Uh, Attorney Peter Lane, Fierce Bloomberg Ohm, Northampton for um, Blue Paws. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. The, my uh, ceiling sounds like it's about to come in with work in my above where I am right now. So I apologize in advance for the sounds that are happening. Um, okay, so I think this is a smart move. Good. To yeah. have, um, did you have anything you wanted to add to the letter you submitted? No, that's all. I just wanted to be clear that we, this was not a scheduled performance and that's why we weren't reaching out and inviting um, the building uh, inspector. We were just conducting this study. Um, I think this was recommended at the end of the last public <laughs> hearing. We recommended the building inspector to come and do a decibel count. Um, and I may have inferred incorrectly from this letter that you were also having an independent study. Is that incorrect? It, no, that's it. This, so this is gonna be an independent study. Um, yeah. the, the team from Cross Spectrum Acoustics will actually need several hours. Um, <clears throat> They're going to set up on, um, uh, sorry, now I'm blanking on the street names. <laughs> They're going to set up on the street behind JJ's High, High Street. Um, and uh, we'll be there for like four to five hours, just taking a reading, a decibel reading on ambient noise. Uh, and then during this half hour performance, they'll be able to get a reading on, you know, what the decibels are above uh, ambient. Um, I know we've all discussed this and agree that um, certainly if we're talking about a permitted use that the, uh, the, um, the, you know, the state guidelines uh, on the sound and 10 decibels uh, above ambient uh, don't necessarily apply, but they feel like they kind of help us get a sense of what should be considered reasonable. Um, mm -hmm. So we'd like to get this reading before we even start um, scheduling the uh, yep. performances. I think it would be extremely helpful if the abutters were notified when this was happening. Okay. So nobody's surprised by right. the loud noise and calling in noise complaints and okay. generally becoming aggravated. All right. Um, I think I have two dates from um, our expert. Uh, oops. 
Uh, so he's he's asking me to pencil in June eighth or June 9th. Um, the, I don't know if the commissioners have a preference uh, or if we should just pick a date and then notify abutters. Yeah, I think just pick a date. I think the <laughs> the key piece is going to be notifying abutters. That's most important to us. All right then. Um, Helen, would you agree with that? Do you have? Do you feel like the date is important the, to us? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think yeah, do do whichever date works. Okay. Natasha's saying just notify and so the idea i'm assuming is to do this acoustics test and then if it's loud then the, then this is a company that can make um right and then he'll have he's going to yeah he's, he'll have further recommendations for what we can do to improve the sound and mitigate noise outside in the neighborhood okay so i'm wondering if it will it really just be a straight 30 minutes or will it be like 10 minutes and then and then adjustments and or is yeah, that... um, he suggested that musicians be a musician be there and ready to play for at least a half an hour. Um, I don't know technically what all is involved. I mean, I've observed one of these so far with the same company for another client. Uh, and it's just a matter of playing the same thing at about the same volume multiple times in order to get readings and then try to do some adjustments in both directions to see how it affects the decibel readings. Okay. No, I think it's a great idea. I mean, I think it's it's great that you know JJ's is going forward and doing this to okay. try and do what they can before it goes live, so to speak. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> trying, trying. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and uh, Mr. Singleton and his company. Uh, that's Herb Singleton is the uh, principal for Cross Spectrum Acoustics. Um, he really will have really kind of basic and often common sense recommendations for just what to do to reduce noise, including uh, using um, sound dampening materials within the pavilion on the sides of buildings and things like that. Um, yep. So. Um, yeah, no, great. Okay. Um, so in terms of notice, uh, do you, is there a preferred way to get this notice to the abutters or, I mean, could we go through the same process for notice to the public hearings or? I think, um, I mean, I think an individual notice to each each household so that it's not messed. I mean, I think this is, if, you know, going to the length of having this company come in and provide this type of guidance and information, I think the best chance at success is if people are individually notified and there's no, no, op, no way that they're going to miss a notice of a hearing in a newspaper. Um, I think that would be really important. The abutters on Kai Street and the abutters on um, High Street and North Maple. The abutters on High and North Maple. Okay. Yeah. And Kai Street. Oh, and Kai. Yeah. Yeah. So the three streets. That's that that's okay. where the um, complaints have generated. Okay. Um, all right then. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Of course. Uh, I guess we'll, we'll uh, once I confirm with Cross Spectrum Acoustics on the specific date, I'll also uh, perhaps email a copy to Ms. Lesko, copy of the yep. notice to Ms. Lesko. Okay. Yep. Annie, Thanks. do you have anything to add? I, I don't um, necessarily. Uh, what, I guess, what um, decibel limits are you, will um, sound, is it sound spectro, cross spectrum, what will they be looking at? What, like, what? Uh, so I think the idea is during the day, they'll be there for several hours, like a, a, a weekday to get a re to get a reading of what ambient noise is like on high uh, in that area in the high street area and then afterwards they will be re they will be getting decibel readings during a live performance from the same location uh, out on high street 
uh, to see what the reading over ambient is with an eye towards the um, DEP's um, guidelines on, uh, you know, a limit at uh, 10 dBs over ambient. So I guess, I guess the question is what limits will they be looking at? Because I, I know the last meeting you had mentioned something about CMRs. Um, yeah, uh, that, so that's the, that's the, the DEP's uh, guidelines on uh, noise. Right, so you're not gonna be, you're not gonna be, I guess, cross-referencing those limits? No, that is what they're, that, that is what, <laughs> yes, they're going to get readings trying to see if we can get this within the guidelines set by DEP. Okay, because I don't, those, I don't think those are the guidelines that the building department will look for. They, they'll look at our zoning ordinance and they'll look at those decibel limits. So, yeah, those, the, this, the city decibel limits will be the the uh, the bar that we need to strive for. Right. Thank you. I couldn't. Yeah. So have I mean having all and so if the building department is is present for this as well, which I think they will be. Um, then it's all information that is is valuable, regardless of if if the city's limits match the DP or not. Oh, so the building department's expected to be at this sound test? Well, I think they were expected to be at the first performance. Right. And it sounds like JJ's is, is pre-gaming any potential issues by just immediately having this, this research done using live music. So having the city there might make sense. Um, if not, then we would need to know the city's uh, decibel limits and establish if they differ from the DEPs. Right. Just for that, so that John and everyone at JJ's is aware, that's what we need to set the bar at. So are you thinking that now that this study is being done that you don't want the building department at the first show? I, I would, out of an abundance of caution and overkill, like to avoid any future issues for the neighbors and for John. So if having the building department present to do a decibel count is going to achieve that goal, then I think now's the time. I'm just envisioning a, a repeat of last year of a music program starting month after month, having complaints from neighbors. So it seems to be the more attention we can give it from the outset, the less likely we will have problems in the future. So yes, I think that the building department should be there. Okay. Helen, do you have thoughts on that? Yeah, I guess, I mean, I don't know if they'll, um, cause, cause I, I guess my understanding is that, you know, they'll play music and then maybe make it say that's too loud, make adjustments, play music, make adjustments until it's an acceptable level. So. I don't know. I don't know how the building department operates. If it's fine right. to have, uh, you know, them out there for half an hour or, or through the whole process, or if it, or if you bring them in at the end, or if it is. Right. I mean, it, it sounds like the initial thought was like, we're going to do this. We're going to get it to where it should be, and then the building, and then they're aware that the building department will be there at the first performance, and are hoping that that it's right or it's the right level. But I do understand what you're saying is, you know, why not avoid any potential problems by getting it to the right level before even the first performance. You right, know? like the, the right level is, is just data information, right? Of knowing what the building department's decibel limit is. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's, that's the information that is most important for cross spectrum to help JJ's achieve is, working within that decibel limit, not necessarily what the DEP is because they may be different. Sure, uh, and I just, um, we can talk to the building department to get clear on this. I'm just looking uh, in the zoning ordinance 
uh, under general standards, and there is a section on persistently loud or disruptive noise between the hours of 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. Um, and then it sets decibel maximums. Yeah, is it 350.12.1? Yeah, 350-12.1, yeah. Uh, subsection A8. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know, it'll be interesting because uh, there's decibels at the source and then there's the decibel yep. reading <laughs> out in the neighborhood. Um, and the, the DEP's 10 dB over ambient, um, you know, assumes that you've established the ambient baseline first. Uh, so I, I, I'd be surprised if the, these decibel limits are between 55 and 65. Uh, in the city's zoning ordinance. I just would be surprised if out in the neighborhood, we are getting readings even that high. Um, I think right. we may be surprised. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then I think, isn't it, isn't it technically at the um, edge of the property is where the building department would be taking a reading? Is there something about that in there? I just remember hearing that. I mean, I know we've had- Voicing is really on the agenda. No, that's what's going on. Um, no, I mean, I don't know this, the building department does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do not know. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, but I think it's, yeah, it's certainly worth at least coordinating or, or getting the information, but like Natasha is saying from the building department. So it's not, so you're not using some different measure and then, right. And then you get to the day of the performance and they say, no, actually, <laughs> you know, it's this, you know. <laughs> I don't know that the building department has to physically be there with cross while this happens, but. Sure. And like I said, I mean, uh, they're going to be there for like several hours doing the yep. ambient reading. Um, but if they want to be there for the, for the, during the live performance, which I assume would be of most interest, then uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess then I'll proceed. Like we said, we'll get notice to the abutters. Uh, a copy will go to Ms. Lesko. And then Ms. Lesko, would you then contact the building department to. Or do you yeah. want me doing that directly? So is the is the consensus that you want the building department at the sound study? I, I think that I don't know. I'm gonna have to talk to them. I don't know if I don't I don't know. I don't know about that. Yeah, I mean I think the priority is that everybody's working with the same end goal mm -hmm. of what that decibel number is for the city of Northampton. Right. That is the priority. Whether or not the building department is present for the sound study, I mean, I think it would be great, but I don't know that it's necessary to require it. Yeah, right. Or that they would do that. <laughs> right. right. Um, also, just if I can be clear, whatever these readings are, are a baseline, and we can expect that CSA can then make recommendations. Yep. Uh, for how to reduce whatever decibel reading we're getting this at this point. Yeah. And I think that's huge and that will be very uh, useful information and helpful. Great. Yeah. Definitely. Um, Annie and Helen, do you have anything else? Uh, no, I don't. Mm, no. Okay. Um, Annie, need a motion on? Uh, no. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And I'm sorry to, to drag this out, but I'm just, I just want to make sure. Am I notifying the building department or, or? It, yeah, no, not it's, it's not clear. Um, I will, I will talk to them tomorrow and see if, see if this is something they're willing to go to. I, I envision this sound test as, as the company figuring out what decibels work, what decibels don't, hopefully getting to a place to where it's acceptable. And then the building department comes to the first show and kind of gives the, okay, this they're good to go. They've made it, all the adjustments that they've needed to make. And I don't, they're, they're not violating any ordinance. Um, that's how I see it. I can, I work 
I can ask them if they're willing to go to the sound study, if that is what you would like. Um, I, I will, I will, I will do my best. Uh, uh, yeah. Again, I don't think it's necessary that they're at the okay. sounds. Okay. okay. Everybody but, information and expectations is what's most important. All right. Okay. Sorry to belabor that. Just wanted to no, it's okay. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Thanks everybody. Um, uh, no matter what, uh, Annie, let's go. I'll just, I'll keep you in the loop. Okay. Great. Yep. Thanks everyone. Thank you. All right. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank Alrighty, um, next agenda item. Discuss the all alcohol restaurant license held by Sylvester's Fine Foods Incorporated and the means for reissuance in accordance with chapter 109 acts of 2016. So I think we should hold off on discussing this. Um, I just wanna, touch base with attorney Seawald about the possibility of, I, I, I don't believe it's the case because I don't wanna, I don't wanna have a, another issue that we, ha that we had, um, but the idea was floated that maybe, maybe someone would come in and take over Sylvester's as Sylvester's, keep the same, corporation and the same DBA and whether or not that can be, they could still operate using that license. Um, I was always under the impression that when ownership changed, that the license came back to the city. Um, but at the end of the day, when, when the commission took back the Ibiza Tapas license and reissued it to Homestead, it was really on the grounds of changing the DBA, not on the grounds of changing ownership. Yep. So I just want to get a confirmation from attorney Seawall before, before moving forward. Okay, yeah, I mean, during that whole thing, my recollection was that it was the, it wasn't so much the human ownership as it was the business had to remain the same. The, Yes, at one time I thought it was ownership. Yeah. Then I thought so. I just want to get a final yep. whether whether or not it is ownership or not. Okay. Um, so yes. Yeah, so I mean, it's a really interesting question because obviously it very much changes the value of of the restaurant. You know, and, and it's like that and they won a lottery. And, and does that transfer forever? Because, and it makes a huge impact, I would think, yeah. on, you know, what the, the sale price would be. The intention of these licenses were that they didn't have value. Right. Which would make me believe that it, I mean, that the ownership can't change, but there's really, the, so I just, need, I just need like final clarification yep. on whether or not the license is tied to the individual or tied to the corporation. Right. Yeah. Um, and this just happened and I was toying with putting it on the agenda or not. And I just, I, I yeah, I just want to check. Yep. I think that makes solid sense. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Um, approval of minutes. Helen, do you want to make a motion for the minutes? Sure. I make a motion to approve the minutes of May 4th, 2022. I'll second. Um, Natasha, Natasha, yes, and Helen, yes. And clerk's update. Yeah. So you had asked about good neighbor language. Um, so this is something that attorney Seawalk felt that it would be better for the rules and regulations not something to put on the actual license. Um, and he, he said that he would be happy to draft something. Okay. If that's the route you wanted to go. And that's the rules and regulations of the license commission. Of the license commission, right. Um, how does that impact license holders? Because aren't the rules and regulations related to how we conduct business and operate as a commission? 
No, no. Um, no. No, it's the it's the rules and regulations like of the license commission that you that you regulate. Hmm. Okay. Like, are you frozen? <laughs> no, you were both frozen. And then like that. <laughs> and no, I mean, we're like dogs with our heads tilted. What? Right. So <laughs> I and it's just pulled out the rules and regulations this morning for I was trying to organize files and I said, oh, the license commission rules and regulations, these are really helpful in terms of how how this entity, how this body operates, was my understanding of the rules and regulations. And the good neighbor language is for license holders. Right. So are the so are the rules and regulations. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's uh, um, their liquor liability insurance, their hours of operation for licensed establishments, extended hours for licensed establishments, um, the fair wage compliance, um, renewal information if if there's a wage bond, um, application fees for for um, license holders, and then um, no alcohol early hours food service. Oh, when that's for local burger, when they're open till three, they're not allowed to serve until three. Um, so that's so that's where it would go, and that's where he's best suited for. Okay. So, for example, you're saying like with Logo Burger has an, since you brought it up as an example, that language is not on their actual license. It's just in the general. That language language. actually is on their license. Yes. Yeah, but okay. This <laughs> regulation is for any license holder that would come forward and want food service until 3 a.m. but can't serve alcohol until 3 a.m. Okay. But then it's also not to be belabor it as we say but um but then it's also printed on the license itself like so it sounds like it's in the general rules and regulations but when it applies specifically to a license holder it's also on their license um or is that just that particular language? just that <laughs> okay. particular one yes okay. i mean yes that's the literally the only one okay so I guess, uh, yeah, his thought is that it's like, then it's just a blanket, like this is going to apply to anyone who has an entertainment license, they have to comply with this and we're not going to, and, and it's redundant in a way to just put it on every entertainment license because it's, it will be in the rules and regulations. Correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Kind of like the, like the fair wage um, oh. regulation that was, a, that the commission adopted in 2019 for like if you get a fair wage bond or if you if you um, violate fair wage laws you have to get a bond the first year it's three times the amount second year it's two times the amount and one year it's the amount of the violation and that's how and so we wouldn't necessarily we would never put that on the license okay okay that makes sense to me yeah. okay Anything else on that? Um, is that what, I guess, is that what you want to do? I mean, I think it's fine. I don't see a problem with redundancy, but that's largely based on the experience we've had this year with the new, with outdoor music complaints. Um, I don't see any harm in having it also on the license to be a good neighbor, but I will I don't feel super strongly about it either, so would defer to Attorney Seawald. Okay, I mean it's ultimately the commission's decision. I mean, if it's our decision, I would I would just assume see it also on the license. Okay. Yeah, I certainly see that point too. I mean, unless it's every time we give out a license, we say just to remind you, <laughs> you know, and then we, you know, and then we state this is in the rules and regulations. You know, but so meaning, I see your point, Natasha, that it's like if it's just actually written there, you know, in black and black and white on the on the license that is in their hand. Right. But, I mean, you no. Know. I appreciate the rules and regulations, and 
as a, but I don't know that anybody reads through them all to the end and picks out which ones are going to apply to them. Cause it seems it's sort of like the, the, the uh, spot where all of the rules and regulations are kept, regardless of if you are subject to one of them, like local burger being a good example of that. And unfortunately, I think going into this um, with more outdoor music coming and we do want people to be successful and have outdoor music if they want to and have it not disturb the neighbors. Unfortunately, I think we also have to tell them to be a good neighbor. And if it's easier to do that written on the license that they're accepting, then I don't see why we wouldn't do that. Okay, so does this go on every entertainment license or just outdoor entertainment license? I guess technically it applies to indoor as well. If you're, yeah. you know, if it's coming through the windows and, you know, thumping or whatever down the street, then whether you're indoor or outdoor, it would, it would still apply. So, right. Um, you know, yep. and then buildings where there are upstairs neighbors, which I had one when I had a cafe. So we had issues with that. Right. So, um, Okay, so is the verdict to yes. have, to have yeah. Attorney Seawall that draft these this language for you? Yes. Yeah, and I, and I guess I'm wondering what the hesitation is. Of, I mean, I think it should be both. It sounds like it should be in the rules and regulations, and then we are suggesting that it should also be on the license itself. And I don't know if it's just a length issue. Is it like then it becomes a two-page license? I, I'm not sure what the hesitation is on putting it on the license itself. I don't think there is any. Okay. Are okay. you from me or from attorney Seawald? From attorney Seawald. And, right. and maybe his point was just that it, sh it should definitely be in rules and regulations to have that sort of authority over everything. Yeah, honestly, I didn't even ask. I just said, where, where would it be more appropriate? And he said, definitely in the rules and regulations. And so I just went with okay. it. I, I didn't say, I, I don't think I said, well, why not the license too, or why not the license? So um, I will I will run that by him. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Anything else on that issue? Nope, I got nothing. Nothing, <laughs> um, Do we have any new business? And I have nothing. We have nothing. Um, how is our new new commissioner search? Um, I was looking before the meeting started. I couldn't find her on the agenda. I need to. I meant I was looking at it this week, and then I got sidetracked. I will find out and give you an update. Okay. Of where, of where she is in the process. Okay. But she has accepted the nomination. I, uh, well, I don't know if she's made it through because she has to go to city council, then city services, then back to city council. I just okay. don't know where in that process she is. Okay. Okay. You just let me know if I need to start thinking about it again. And yes, yes. No, she's, she's definitely there. She okay. filled out the application. She was on okay. the first city council agenda. I just don't know where, where it is now, but she's, okay. she's there. Um, Helen, do you have anything? I don't. No new business here. No new business. All right. Annie, anything else? Uh, no, that's it. Okay. Then I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. Thank you both. Great. Okay. Thank you about the technical issues. Oh, no worries earlier. You got through it. <laughs>